What is up my YouTube family? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, then it's just welcome to my channel. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed. First of all, how are y'all doing? It's a whole new year. I haven't seen y'all since last year. I'm one of those corny people who like to say that, so deal with it. I'm feeling very excited about this new year. I don't know what it is because I'm not one of those new year, new me type of people. I'm very much one of those people that recognizes when there is a change that needs to be made and I don't feel like waiting on the new year makes a difference in how that change plays out. And I definitely don't wait on January 1st to set goals and start them. However, 2022 feels different. I don't know. I'm feeling real motivated and inspired and excited about the year. Maybe there are a lot of things in store this year for me that I don't know about y'all and are gonna be good and maybe that's just why my spirit is just like yes now although this is a new year same on me but this is a new piece of hair girl I just I'm, I like it a lot I'll leave the link down below because I know the girls are gonna ask where it came from and this is like a more affordable type of wig because I usually invest a little bit more into my little hair I don't know if sis is an investment piece I don't know how long she gonna look like this, but she cute for now, so we gonna ride with her. We ain't gonna give her too much just yet. I have missed y'all a lot. I hope you guys had a great holiday. I hope the people who are dealing with things during the holiday season that makes it a sucky time of the year, I definitely understand how that feels. And I know y'all probably glad it's over. And so I'm happy for y'all too. Yeah, I've rumbled enough. So without further ado, let's just get into today's video. Today's video is an urban legend about the candy lady. Have you heard this urban legend? Because I had not heard of it before I began to research. In my mind, all the candy lady was, was that one apartment in the neighborhood or that one house in the neighborhood who sold all of the good old childhood delectables, pickles, nachos, candy, and all of the things grow for very cheap. Freeze cups and all of that. That's the only candy lady I knew. But apparently it's a different one and a whole story behind it. And we're going to get into that today. So as the legend goes, around the early 1900s, children began to go missing in this one little particular small town in Texas. Night after night, a child or two would vanish from their homes without a single trace. And in each instance, there would be no leads or any evidence ever found that would suggest that they were kidnapped or had run away. No one had a clue where the the kids were what could have happened to them child or if that was coming back as more and more children go missing the parents are not getting any closer to finding out the truth behind the disappearances and child the truth was literally right beneath their noses after some time goes by finally the older of the remaining children in the neighborhood began to confess about eating this candy that had been left in the windowsill of their room at night after everyone else had gone to bed and in addition to the candy left behind there was a note signed the candy lady. Y'all wasn't my candy lady. I knew growing up because sis wasn't giving away a thing for free. I'm telling you that now. Candy lady I knew wasn't giving out no free candy. Okay? Now the children had up to this point kept it a secret. Fearing that the parents would put a stop to the candy being left for them. And they figured that it was a harmless gesture. Made by who? Who knows? But that's not important when you're a kid and you're getting free candy, right? Once the adults find out that this is going on, their initial assumption is that this candy is poison. They get local law enforcement involved and then from there an investigation is launched into who was leaving the candy and if they were in fact being poisoned. However, the deputy believed that the candies were not necessarily poisoned, like he checked for that, but he believed that they were linked to the disappearances of all of these children who had gone missing throughout the neighborhood. Now, one of the reasons that, oh no, I've been doing my makeup wrong the whole time. Why y'all ain't tell me to do eyes first? Y'all let me do the whole face base. This what we doing this year? Y'all not looking after your girl? That's crazy. Is this because I've been gone so long? Like, what is it, girl? Why didn't you tell me? One of the main reasons that he suspected that the candies were linked to the disappearances is because apparently after a child had received candy for a while, there would also be a note left on the inside of the wrapper asking the child to come and play. He is putting all of the things together and he is feeling like, you know what? I'm gonna crack the code. I'm gonna find out 
who is taking y'all's children and leaving them candy. And as soon as he began piecing all of the things together, something really strange happened. A farmer finds a child-sized set of teeth, just a loose girl, wrapped up in a candy wrapper one morning while he is tending to his fields. Then, just a few weeks into his investigation, the deputy who is on the case doing all of the research and getting closer as the days go by to solving the mystery of what was going on with these disappearing as children is found in a ditch with his eyes stabbed out with a fork. How they know it was a fork that did it though? I just want to know. And his pockets are also filled with candy. This is obviously a message and a warning from whoever is behind all of the things going on in the town. And it definitely spooks all of the residents. Until this day, the locals say that she'd taken them off somewhere and pulled their little teeth out one by one and plucked their little eyes out with the fourth child. And what happens to them after the fact is unknown, but they are never seen or heard from again. Now, was this story crafted by clever parents to scare their children into not taking candy from strangers? Or is this a story that originates from a true heinous crime like the boogeyman? Turns out that this urban legend does in fact have a little bit of truth in it. In the 1900s, in a small Texas town called Terrell, Texas, or Terrell, Texas, I'm not sure, because I have a friend whose name is spelled like this and we call him Terrell. Anywho, a similar story took place in this small town in Texas. It's rumored to be the origin point of the Candy Lady urban legend. Now let's get into what happened here. A few years prior to the birth of this urban legend, there was a woman by the name of Clara Crane who lived on a farm with her husband and their young daughter. Born in 1871, Clara had married Leonard Gilbert Crane, an older man in the neighborhood who owned a farm and made a lot of money from it. And so she looked at him as a means of security. The two married very quickly after meeting. They wasted no time tying the knot. And not long after doing so, Clara becomes pregnant with their daughter, who they name Marcella. And she calls Marcy for short. Just, you know, a little nickname, a little term of endearment. With the age gap between the two, Clara not really having many friends, really no friends at all. The birth of Marcy was the best thing that could have happened to her. She was very lonely. And Marcy provided her this level of companionship that she was missing in her life. Marcy was her entire world. Now, Leonard would be in a bit older and a businessman needing to tend to his farms and things. He could not really be bothered with the shenanigans of a young child. Leaving Marcy and Clara to spend a lot of time alone together and Clara really did not mind at all. This actually just strengthens the bond between them. Clara was obsessed with little Marcy so she did not mind being the one to always take care of her. She left a little sidekick and things were great. That is until tragedy strikes. In 1893, at just five years old, little Marcy is killed in a farming accident. Leonard had been told to keep an eye on Marcy, as he sometimes had to do when Clara had to go run errands or carry out tasks that prevented her from carrying Marcy along or give her child her full attention. Now to make matters worse, it was also found out that Leonard had been drinking at the time of the accident. So not only was Clara devastated, she was also pissed. She blames Leonard for the loss of their child and afterward becomes extremely withdrawn, falls into a severe deep depression. Cause this little girl was at everything. Like this child was her whole life. Her purpose, her reason for living, just all of the things, right? And now all of the things are gone. Now, an investigation is launched surrounding the accident that happened involving Marcy. But in the end, both Clara and Leonard are cleared of any wrongdoing or foul play. Leonard was not even charged for negligence. And this did not sit right with Clara. Over the next two years, you know how us women are. I don't know if this is a woman thing or if it's a human thing. But sometimes a little small seed gets planted in your mind. And the more you think about it and it festers, it just grows into something huge, right? That's why they say when you make your woman mad, don't give her too much time to think. Once you leave her alone to think and talk to a few of her girlfriends, it's a wrap. Like the little problem is not a big problem. But anyway, over the next two years, Clara is alone with her thoughts. She is seeing Leonard out there raking the leaves and she is becoming more and more pissed by the day. Her resentment, her rage, her anger, it just intensifies as the days pass. 
and she becomes obsessed with the idea of Leonard paying for his awful mistake. One day in 1895, two years after Marcy's accident, Clara decided that today was gonna be that day. She'd taken some caramel candy, which was her husband's absolute favorite and lace them with poison before offering them to her husband. Elena passes away as a result of the laced caramels. And after the passing of Leonard, people who knew the couple become extremely worried about Clara. They had noticed that she was not quite the same after the accident, which of course that is to be expected. But up until this point, everybody felt like at least she still had her husband to watch after her to make sure she was okay. And now she no longer has Leonard. She's just alone on the farm. People were convinced that if the accident that took Marcy did not do it, this for certain would cause Clara to become unhinged. So the day after Leonard's passing, a neighbor of theirs decides to, you know, do the nice neighborly thing and stop by and check on Miss Clara. When she gets to the farm, she finds Clara in a, quote, shaken and frenzied state. And she was out there building a fire right next to the home. Now, the neighbor is, of course, very concerned. She calls for local law enforcement to come out and check on check on Miss Clara and see what's going on. A child Fred Springer arrives to the home and instantly realizes that he is definitely not welcome. As soon as he approaches Clara and questions her about, you know, what she's doing and if she is all right, Clara lunges at the sheriff and attacks him and he immediately takes her into custody. Shortly after she is taken into custody for the assault, it is revealed that she is actually the one behind Leonard's death that it was not some tragic accident that the public initially assumed that it was. And at this point, she of course is facing not only battery charges, but first degree murder. Claire opts for an insanity plea stating that she was not in her right mind at the time that she decided to, you know, hand her husband those lace little caramels. She claimed to be suffering from mania at the time. Now, if this plea is honored, it's a good chance that she would be granted some leniency in her sentencing, which at the time she was facing life in prison. She also stood a good chance in being housed in an asylum versus being sent to a prison for the rest of her life. And that is what she preferred because in her mind, in a lot of people's mind, it is the lesser of two evils. Clara Crane is tried and convicted of the murder of her husband, but given the circumstances, she is sent to an asylum versus being sent to prison. And they haul her off to the North Texas Lunatic Asylum, which today because that name is a little problematic, is known as Terrell State Hospital or Terrell State Hospital, depending on how you pronounce it. Now, she did not keep up any trouble. She wasn't involved in any shenanigans. She was pretty much just a model patient, right? However, about a year into her sentence, the staff began to notice something really strange and peculiar going on with Miss Clara. Clara had torn her bed sheets and tied them roughly into the shape of a little doll. And it's not the doll per se that they find the most concerning is the fact that she talks to the doll so frequently like it's a living being and she calls the doll Marcy. She would care for this doll like it was an actual child. She would sing to it, put it to bed at night, respond to it as if the doll was asking her questions. One of the main questions being when will they get to go home? And a little bit more primal because the dried out. In 1899, roughly four years into Claire sentence. Due to overcrowding at the hospital, Clara Crane is released. Now, aside from the strange little doll thing, she was viewed as charming, soft-spoken, sweet, and most of all, harmless by the hospital staff. So, she was one of the first to be nominated for release. And since her crime had been deemed a crime of passion, she was considered less likely to reoffend. So, she is approved to be let go, and she writes this this awkward little letter to her sister. And I'm gonna read you a piece of it right now, just to let you know what mental state she was kind of in when they released her. She says, Dearest Aggie, I am elated. I have been informed by Dr. Matthews that Marcy and I will be returning home in less than three weeks. As you can imagine, Marcy can barely contain her excitement. Every night she asks, is tomorrow the day when we go home, mother? Very soon, I will be able to tell her yes. Child of Dog was asking, 
The doll was asking questions, my girl. For the first few months after her release, they check on her frequently just to make sure she's not out there doing anything she should not be doing. But after a couple months of seemingly acceptable behavior, she falls off their radar and they kind of just let her go off and do her own thing, unbothered. Months go by and those months turn into years and no one has heard from Lil Clara. No one has seen her and her doll. And she pretty much just falls off of everybody's radar at this point. Nobody's really checking for her like that. That is until 1904 when a few children go missing who were last seen playing near the old Crane Farm. Law enforcement, the local residents, they all get together and they search for these children, but they're unable to find them. And it is at this point that people begin to question Whatever happened to Clara Crane? Where is Sis at? Whatever happened to Sis after her release? This then leads them to suspect that she might have had something to do with the disappearance of these children. It was the public's perception that Clara had gone mad after losing her child and she was so desperate to have a child of her own again that she would do anything, including kidnapping someone else's child in order to have a child of her own again. Child, they said she got tired of that little doll not eating, not answering her questions. As time goes on and they are unable to find Clara or these missing children, the history of what had happened to Clara and the disappearance of these children, the urban legend of the candy lady is born and used to warn children not to accept candy from strangers. <laughs> All right, uh, Bella is fresh out of patience, so I gotta wrap this up. Now we are back to regularly scheduled programming over here. I know the last couple of weeks, I kinda took it easy because you know, mama needed a break and I know y'all understand that. And the last couple videos were true crime and I wanted to come back with something, you know, a little different. So I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. I love these urban legends, honestly. And a lot of you guys do too. I have a little list of urban legends that I'm working off of, but if you know any good ones and you wanna suggest them, leave them down in the comments. I'm gonna pin a comment for y'all to leave y'all suggestions. Now I already know somebody is gonna misinterpret the assignment. They're not gonna understand the assignment. They're gonna pop into my little comment section and suggest a crime case. I know how y'all are and what's gonna happen. But I am asking specifically for urban legend suggestions. So if you know any, like I said, drop them down below in the pinned comment. And also before I go, see the thing is, I've been stuck between not wanting to bring this negativity into my channel and my space and addressing it. I know once upon a time, the like, quick come up on YouTube was to go at a bigger platform or larger YouTuber and start drama, start the mess, girl, y'all go back and forth. People have clicked on your profile and subscribed to your channel and paid attention for a little while. And honestly, none of the channels that I watched come up like that have succeeded in the long run. It was very, very temporary. And so I just wanna say, if you are coming up in the YouTube world. Don't take that route. It's just, not only is it played, it's just not okay to do. Like why, why opt for the drama? When you do things with malicious intent, bad intentions, no good comes from it. And if it does, it does not last. So for those of you who are trying to build up your following, trying to build up your platform, your subscriber count, all of the things, girl, I urge you, and encourage you to trust in your talent or your personality, your craft, your artistry, whatever you want to label it as. Trust in that to help you build up your following and gain the success that you want to achieve. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with gimmicks per se unless they're affecting somebody else. When your gimmick is targeting somebody else, starting drama, spreading lies, and being hurtful to somebody else, it's a problem and it's not okay. And I actually had an experience, um, I think, I don't know if it was late November or December where this happened, but let me just tell y'all real quick, and I'm not gonna drop her channel because I'm not giving you what you want, y'all. You're not getting a click and a view off of off of mother not today so you guys know that i have introduced some new segments to my channel just to give you guys some variety give myself some variety and just switch up things and the segment that i'm specifically referring to is the beyond belief factor fiction segment love the idea love the show i've been having so much fun with it you guys love it it's really cute if you haven't checked it out you should girl you're missing out 
you're missing out. But anywho, I had said in that video, because when I first got the idea that I wanted to do it, I searched on YouTube, fact or fiction, beyond belief. I didn't see any videos like that. The only thing I saw was like, episodes of the show old episodes when i filmed the first video i came on like you know this is something new i haven't seen this be done on youtube the truth i'm excited i'm here for all of the things let's do it right i was so excited about it still am i upload my first two videos and then i check my dms on instagram y'all know i'm a girl that likes to respond because i love engaging with y'all i like talking to y'all genuinely like i really do now mother is thumbing through her dms when she comes across one from this account and it was a pretty lengthy lengthy message and i'm not gonna read it but the meat and potatoes is i see you launched this segment on your channel and said you were the first but i actually uploaded a video like this in october here's the receipts here's my link to my video so i would appreciate if you tell your subscribers that I did this in October the tone very much gave you need to do this like do it like you wrong do it tell your people about me give me a shout out see and this, this is the thing I'm very much a Scorpio I'm very much one of those people where you can ask me but you can't tell me to do nothing this channel is called Brittany Vaughn that's my name this is my my platform I am not part of a network I don't even have a manager this is this is mine I own all of this. Like this channel is fully up to my discretion what goes on it, okay? And so I cannot be told what I need to do. But the niceness in me was just like, well, maybe she didn't mean it like that. Like maybe, maybe that's not how she meant it. So I checked my email and I noticed she had emailed me first, pretty much saying the same thing. I noticed you started doing this, but I actually started this on my channel in October. Now mind you, like how her video is, is not exactly similar to mine. It's just like a voiceover and it is telling a story. You have to guess if it's true or false. So in that aspect, yes, but like it's not a person sitting in front of a camera doing makeup, telling multiple stories, and then it's like, which one? It's not like that, but it is similar. So I'm not gonna act like it's just a whole completely different concept. It's not. The email wasn't exactly the same as the DM, but it was pretty much the same idea. I did this in October. Here's the link as proof. You should tell your followers that I did this first in October. Initially, I was thinking about how I wanted to respond. And I was like, I'm not sure if I'm misinterpreting the tone of this email or this DM. So I'm not gonna be rude. That was the plan. And in my mind, I'm thinking of what I want to say and how I want to handle it. Like, my spirit told me that this girl felt like and believed that I stole this concept from her. But she did not say that in the email or the DM. So I'm just like, let me not assume. But my spirit said, girl, you're not assuming. This is what's going on. While I'm in my head thinking about how I want to handle it, like how do I want to respond to her? How I want to, you know, if I want to say something on the channel, which I was leaning toward no because of how she came at me. But I was like, well, maybe, you know, maybe depending on how this communication goes, that could happen. And in the meantime, while mama is thinking why the hamster's in the wheel, I go to check my comments on YouTube in, in the creator studio. Now I'm sure we all know how YouTube works in the comment section. Whereas if you say certain things, certain words, I guess, or certain phrases, YouTube will grab that comment and hold it for review. So when I go in and look at my hell for review comments, I can approve them or delete them. I don't really check the held for review comments that often, but this particular day, some said, girl, Go see what's in there. I kid y'all not. Like the first nine or ten, I believe it's nine. The first nine comments is this burner account saying, I'm not trying to be messy and start something, but she stole this concept from this YouTube channel. And it's not fair that these larger platforms come and take from smaller YouTubers and take from smaller creators and pass these ideas off as their own. I mean, comment after comment, like she is responding to people in these videos. She is posting this comment just by itself. And because she was also dropping the link, like here's the proof, here's the proof. YouTube like grabbed it. Cause if you drop a link, YouTube is automatically gonna hold it for review. First I go to this little Jane's profile. No, no picture. It's just a burner account, nothing is there. So I go to the account that I supposedly had taken my idea from to see what's going on. And I'm like, this is no shade because I started 
with zero subscribers, okay? Everybody starts somewhere. But I'm just like, how is it that you have nine subscribers and seven views on your video and you truly believe I was one of those seven? Furthermore, I've been hinting about the new content coming to my channel weeks before I uploaded it. Content that has been planned and in the works. I had just been trying to figure it out in my mind. How I wanted to, you know, produce it to you guys. And I told y'all I was questioning whether or not y'all would even like the content anyway in the first place. So it got scrapped a couple of times. This idea has been in my head for months before it actually hit the channel. Months before October. So it's like, girl... What are we, what are we, what are we doing here? When I saw her spam in my comment section, I said, you know what, spirit girl, you was right. She is accusing you of stealing her idea. This is the thing. This is why you got to be careful who you follow on social media. I go to her Instagram account. All of this uplifting women's empowerment, just all of this positivity. And I'm like, girl, you don't even bring that. You're not even bringing that. That ain't even what you about. I mean, comment after comment, she stole this concept from, from so-and-so. Y'all know I got a little touch of PTSD from people saying I stole this makeup and true crime concept from Bailey Sarian and tried to play it off as, you know, my original idea. I got a little PTSD from them girls from way back in the day. So I was ready to let the girl have it. I'm not, I'm gonna be honest, I was. But it wasn't even necessary to let this have it. You wanna know why? Because in my comment section, I also saw this other channel who respectfully said, hey, just wanna let you know, we, because I believe they're a couple, we've been doing this on our channel for oh, some time now, and we call it, I believe, Fact or Fiction Fridays, if I'm not mistaken, but I'll insert their, their channel here if you wanna check it out. If you're interested in that kind of content and you want some more of it, there you go. But yeah, they didn't come like, you didn't start this, we started this first. If that's how she felt, that's not what she gave. Cause this is my thing, this is what our, aside from you just blatantly lying on me and saying I stole something from you, which is not true, I am so transparent on this channel. I have always been open about anybody inspiring anything that I have done on this channel. And not only that, I have no issue shouting out anybody else's channel with smaller and up and coming or anybody's channel that I enjoy, period. Check my description box. From day one, from the very first True Crime video, I have said Bailey Sarian inspired me. Love her. Check her out if you're not familiar with her content. And then as time progressed, there have been people that I've added to the description box saying, hey, check this person out. I like their content. They do similar content. If you like mine, you might enjoy theirs. Better off red. Some of you have found me through her. Some of you have found her through me. Child, Bella is getting upset in the background just hearing all of the things that her mother has had to go through. And you know, Bella likes to fight. So I have to, you know, calm down, mamas. Calm down, it's okay. Not today. We not throwing paws, Bella. We classy, okay? Where was that? Kennedy Myers, who y'all might know from being the cake lady on TikTok. She has over half a million followers on TikTok. Her Instagram is popping. YouTube is on its way, girl. You got this. I've been shouting her out for months. And then there's also Brother C. Her channel, I have put in my description box, been there for months. I shout these people out. These people I have posted to my Instagram, recommended their content. And I really try to support them beyond that because they can hit me up and ask me questions on Instagram, hit the DMs and I answer. I know a lot of women claim this and some women it may not be true for, but when I say I'm a woman's woman, like I'm a girl's girl, I am very much that. A supporter of women, I'm not that girl that would steal somebody's idea and try to pass it off as my own. I'm I'm not a thief period but especially another woman trying to just make it in these youtube streets like i am not that girl and it was just so weird for somebody to come and accuse me of this like it really it really irritated the asshole of my soul it did and so given the fact that i came across the comments of the channel who respectfully brought it to my attention that oh we do a similar concept like we do a concept like this over on our channel i just politely and respectfully let her know like um so you've been doing this since October, but these people, this channel over here has actually been doing it a year. So imagine you just finding out about their channel and somebody coming and telling you, you stole your concept from them because you've only been doing it since October. Sis, that's what's happening here. I assure you, I have never come across your channel or theirs prior to me deciding to, you know, roll this out on my channel. Girl, I do not have to steal, girl. 
And even if I did see the concept somewhere else, guess what, girl? I would get on here just like I did when I started doing true crime and makeup and let you know where I saw it. I have no problem with that. And I'm loving these lashes that I got. These lashes came from Madame LaRoe Beauty. She sent these to me a while back and I'm just not wearing them. And I feel real cute and they're real cute, but the style is not on the box. I don't know if she has multiple styles, but the style number is not on this box. But yeah, I'm feeling real cute in these lashes in today's look. And I just wanted to get that off my chest. I didn't want to bring it to my channel because I feel like the person just did not deserve the energy or the space. But I want to use this situation as an example to let you know that you don't have to be so nasty and so rude and vindictive to come up in this world. The universe, God, whatever you want to refer to it as, higher power, whomever, rewards the true version of you. You can pretend, you can post on Instagram, uplifting quotes and all of the things, but the higher power responds to the real version of you. I just saw this as a perfect opportunity to give this message that you should lean on your talent. Like you don't have to come out here trying to start drama or beefs with other people to get attention. That's not the way. That's, it's really not. Because once that drama and that hype surrounding it dies down, the interest goes away because that's what they came for. That's why we have all of these channels. And it's no shade to nobody in particular because I'm not thinking of anybody in particular. But I know several channels like this, and I'm sure you do too, who have like a million subscribers or half a million subscribers that they gained from either entertaining or participating in some drama. And once the hype around the drama died down, they're left with all of these subscribers shot and like a thousand views on a video. 898,000 subscribers and you have 1.6 thousand views on a video because people are not interested in you for real. They were here for the drama. It does not work. Find something else to do. And with that being said, all of that, my mouth is dry, I'm sipping on this water. I wanna kick it with my girls on Instagram Live tonight, so I need to be wrapping this up for real and saying bye to y'all so I can say hey to y'all over on Instagram later. I love y'all, I hope you have a great week. I hope y'all are being safe, happy, and healthy. Like this video if you have not already subscribed. If you have not, share this video with a friend or anybody. Y'all, I'm trying to get to 250K this year. And I think I'm gonna surpass that, but that's the goal that I set for myself. So help me get there. Y'all help me get this far with sharing and liking and boosting mother's algorithm. Like, girl, we a family. Let's do this together. As always, I appreciate you so much for spending your time with me, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one on Tuesday. Peace. Children in one particular rural era. I, why do I always try to say rural and I can't say rural? Like, why? Rural. Rule, rule. Yes, we have a special guest today. And if you've been rocking with me for a minute, you already know who the special guest is. And I'm gonna be looking for it in the comments. One of the main reasons why he suspected, suspected, girl, that's not a word. One of the main reasons that he is the girl. Why can't say that word today? Which is typical at the turn of the 19th century. Was that the 20th century or the 19th? to like 1900 would 1900 be gotta be right yeah oh my god they're gonna think i'm dumb that companionship that she desperately lacked desperately lacks no and child share fred springer over is his name yeah it is bella bella just ran through here and messed up the lighting or did she because i think i still look cute it was the perceptions, I was gonna say it was the perceptions public, no. You're so cute. Hi, mommy. You just that cute. What? I know, you're just the cutest little girl. Bella and I's conversation these days are a lot more pleasant than they used to be.